imagine every time you went out to use a toilet anywhere, you're only able to open doors or risk falling. Or you're laid down on a dirty public toilet floor. You have nowhere to dispose of the contents of products. Or you create a mess and have no ability to clean up in public facilities. Or worse still, you are told to go eat your lunch or medicate in a dirty public toileting facility every time you went out into the community. Welcome to my world, the world of disability, complex medical, the elderly, and parents, small children. I'm Catherine Lyon, and whilst I was born with my disability, I wasn't always in a wheelchair. At nine months of age, I was diagnosed with microcephaly, and the doctor said I wouldn't be intellectually capable of achieving much. During grade eight, I had multiple seizures causing brain damage, and I ended up losing my memory for five months. I was told it was like living in the movie Fifty First Dates where I forgot my family and my friends, nor did I understand how to use everyday objects. Back then, no one really understood about neuroplasticity. The doctors assessed and assumed that I would never improve, but my brain actually started to repair itself. And whilst I can remember many things and have improved greatly, I do still struggle with ongoing memory issues. Hence, my tablet is gonna help me keep on track. At puberty, the long bones in my legs twisted. And in year 12, whilst completing exams, I underwent bilateral derotational osteotomies, where they broke my legs in eight places and derotated them back over a period of three weeks. Unfortunately, when I got back to walking, my bones were twisted. And, I, and over a couple of years, I have required multiple surgeries for this. After diagnosing me with an unidentifiable progressive degenerative connective tissue disorder, back in 2011, the doctors recommended I go home and wait to die. And the medical department questioned my quality of life, forcing me to have to fight for my right to medical treatment. As this disorder affects every part of my body, from my heart, organs, to my muscles, skin, and bones, at times, impacting on my ability to communicate or move, in, or move independently. And I end up spending days on end unable to feed or toilet myself. In February 2016, my mother challenged me to live my life instead of waiting to die. So I started Accessibility, a social enterprise with a mission to change the perception of society by developing more inclusive toileting solutions that could install or be retrofitted to improve lives and create safer, more sanitary facilities everywhere. Today, my topic is the emotion behind the process of creative change and its global impact on industry. And so, it should be no surprise what my focus is, creating change in toilets. Earlier this year, I received an accolade and it was the first time I was acknowledged as a change maker and it was truly an exciting moment for me, which is kind of ironic, as 12 months ago, I was live streamed over, over 400,000 people globally, as I declared, I am the face of change. But recently I've realized everybody represents change in their own individual way. It is woven into our DNA. Each one of us is changing as we go in different directions. For some of us, it relates to our pursuit of happiness, and we will change everything around us to achieve this. We all grow through interaction. We all learn, multiply, and teach. We are ever evolving, and yet there is a difference between change and creative change. For me, the purpose behind creative change is learning from the past and applying it to the present with the intention of creating a better future. And whilst many people are innovative, and achieving change in their own ways. Understanding the emotion behind creative change is key within survival, within an ever-changing competitive industry. The solution is rarely easy, as business determines success of product by profit. However, when you're looking at the needs of society, the profits are not always tangible. I was looking for the right solution, to revolutionize the way society viewed and supported itself. I wanted to develop the processes that would support people better by enhancing community access and improving quality of life. 
For me, business was secondary. Here in Australia, we are like every other nation. We perceive society as inclusive, embracing all. But is this reality? How would you feel if I told you every day people have issues with accessing sanitation and waste management in your own community? In Australia, this impacts on six million people. My disability has given me the unique perspective of the lack of functionality within our community. I can see many failings in how things are designed, and I can see the isolation this causes. You see, toilets aren't accessible. In fact, one in four people are unable to toilet safely, and this impacts on the economy. It is time to acknowledge everybody's right to toilet with dignity. And so, I would like to share with you all my story. Back in 2009, I attended my graduation, and this was the day my mother found out the schools and my secret. I could access every classroom, but there were problems with the accessible toilets. There was a step outside, and my chair didn't fit through the doorway, and the handle bars were fitted incorrectly. Even though I wasn't the only wheelchair-bound student at this school, our needs had not been properly considered. In fact, I hadn't even told mum, as I presumed this is just how society was. I dealt with it by holding on all day, wearing sanitary products in my underwear, hoping and praying I wouldn't have an accident. Although sometimes it was unavoidable. This impacted on my kidneys causing infections, and my bladder overextended daily. It is now unable to function correctly. And eventually, I will end up with a stoma pouch. Seven years had passed by, and with society telling me what I couldn't do. And so, I decided to come out of the shadows and overcome the perceived limitations society forced on me by others. Early 2016, I discovered to use and how to use my voice as a change maker. However, having a need to access a toilet was not enough. The idea of improving the way they're designed doesn't guarantee change either. To achieve this, all I needed to do was to have the government and society want this change as well. It's a simple premise, to, to want to be able to go to the toilet safely or with dignity, right? Frustratingly, I found out it was not quite so simple. For someone who lives with memory issues, this wasn't easy. I had to understand what was required to enable this. Having never considered myself as a humanitarian or advocate, I set out on my quest for change. The challenges I faced meant I needed to learn the skills to become an innovator and an entrepreneur. And all of this from someone who was told, she didn't have the skill set to study, and deemed unemployable because of a life-threatening medical condition. This was an emotional roller coaster for me, as I had to convince myself I was capable, and then I had to prove it to others. To achieve it, I, I began by identifying my core value, inclusion. As for how I felt about not being able to access facilities safely and with dignity, was just as important as finding a solution. Not having the knowledge I needed, I began thinking outside of the box. I didn't know it then, but I was creating change not only for myself, but for the world. I contacted my local council and asked if they had any small businesses I could tap into. This enabled me to connect with people who understood the details of developing a business. At this stage, I had already spent six months researching problems of toilets in the wider community. Developing connections with support groups and end users that will benefit from change and by speaking with these people. I discovered I wasn't the only ones whose mental health had been impacted on the lack of access of toilets. By August, I had contacted my local university, asking whether I could utilize their students and facilities to resolve issues creating the opportunity of working with multiple designers and by collaborating with end users, we were able to come up with better blueprints during this process. Whilst the designers were working towards solutions, I started engaging with various industries like retail, tourism, health, 
and government to better understand the marketplace and arouse their interest. I had realized that for any product to be successful, there needs to be a demand. There is no point to having a solution if there is no market. But how do you make others want it when they don't see a problem with any of the current facilities? To change perception within communities, the government and the corporate sectors, I needed to go beyond the product, the design of the product and bring the emotional impact of access to the forefront of everybody's mind. But no one really likes to talk about toilets or toileting. It is perceived as a taboo. And so I got asked to speak at the World Toilet Summit. And yes, there is one. <laughs> I went along to present an insight relating to the problems in toileting within developed countries with the goal to educate and improve outcomes globally. And whilst the focus of the summit was sanitation and hygiene in third world countries, I was hoping to show these leaders that they could learn from our problems we live in within developed countries and build better solutions in third world ones. India presented their program of building 10 million toilets in over a period of 10 years. They had already successfully built 10 million upstairs. Upstairs! So I questioned, why had they not built any with France? As what they had not realized was there is two types of people in this world. People who can climb stairs and people who can't. It just isn't... Pe it just isn't people that are disabled, like me. This impacts on the elderly, people with complex medical conditions, and very small children. Today in India, they are starting to build community toilets with ramps to better support everyone. But did you know that 20% of our population live within continents, and this includes men? Even the German government have legislated a need to deal with the growing issue of incontinence in males in their country. Now let's add to this percentage the number of people who use toilet wipes. According to studies done by Sydney Water, the largest group of for users of toilet wipes is not people with disabilities, nor is it parents with small children. It's men aged 13, 18 to 34 years. Women have access to sanitary bins. So why don't men? I had already approached various sanitary bin providers about creating bins that could utilize, that could deal with these issues and then approached the government about identifying the incontinence bin within their legislative standards for public facilities. And then I approached retail and the health sectors about installing them. I was so excited when our state government identified this as a necessity within their current building plans and started seeing them included into accessible facilities within some major shopping centers and government hospitals. For me, it meant the government and industry had joined my quest for change. But one of my proudest moments was the installation of an assistant animal relief barrier in the Brisbane airports. After, after raising this important issue with the government back in 2016. So let's all talk about, so let's all talk about it for a moment. Where do the support dogs go to the toilet? Grass dairy is not always accessible and ac or available in major cities, shopping centers and on public transport. And collecting their droppings is not so simple either. When you are physically disabled, or blind. Now, put yourself in my shoes for a moment and imagine you are out and about in the community and you need to use a toilet. But the only accessible toilet available has a manual door that is operated and there is no one around to assist you. You try to lean forward with one hand whilst propelling yourself whilst propelling your wheelchair with the other, but you are struggling because the doors are much larger and heavier than others, and your sense of gravity is lower. Now let's add ramps. When I say it's almost impossible, believe me, it is. 
having self-opening doors is so much easier. As planning development and building regulations start to support these types of reform, the building of more inclusive communities will expand. But at the end of the day, emotion has played a major part in my decision making and reasoning processes. How effectively it is applied defines the difference between success and failure. Looking back, whilst I could have done some things differently, I have learned that creating a business and product is not enough. Creating the right solution by choosing ideas that support the development of greater access, which everyone will benefit from, was far more important. So my core value through all of this has remained the same, inclusion. Through making some minor changes, one can have a radical impact on how society connects in the future. Did you know there is actually a World Toilet Day? Google it as it is happening soon. Consider what you have heard today and go inside a public toilet. Look around and think about how this could be made better for everybody. Does it need a bin or soap? What can you do to make a difference in your community? And remember, toilets aren't for human rights, nor is toileting with dignity. Yet we all need a toilet to survive. <coughs> As I have found, I have been on an emotional journey of self-discovery, purpose-driven to better define who I am and how I belong within our world. It just so happened to include the desire to build a more inclusive one, one where I and people like me can belong. With a lot of patience, determination, and sometimes tears, I have been fascinated by every step of my journey so far. As in the beginning, I wanted to be able to tell it with dignity. And to achieve this, I had to come out of the shadows. And today, it has evolved into something much larger, something no one would have ever imagined. Today, history is being changed. And little did I know, I would be the one to change history. All of this started with an idea, a simple need that alone would have been an impossible task, yet from the help of others, creative change happens. But just remember, each of you are change makers, and your change doesn't have to be history making or out there for the world to see. For your change to happen, you need to take a step forward and create your journey, as you will find amazing things are going to happen. Thank you.